First Samuel chapter 2, and what we studied last night was Samuel. We broke the chapter in half, and we're going to pick up in Samuel 2, 12. You can pick up the, the other parts of chapter 2 in the previous video. In 2, 12, now the sons of Eli, and they're mentioned over here in chapter 1, verse 3, Hophni and Phinehas. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial, wicked, vile. And we'll see their works. Every time you see that word Billy, I, I mean, it is wickedness. They're not good. They knew not the Lord. Eli is the priest. And his sons don't know the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when they, when any man offered sacrifice, came to the tabernacle. Now remember, sacrifices were given to the priests. The priest's servant came while the flesh was in each seething on the pot, on the grill, with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. A pitchfork kind of thing. And you'll see pictures of the devil with that pitchfork. You'll see pictures of uh, 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 Poseidon with that uh, pitchfork. And he struck it in the pan or kettle, or cauldron, first time that word shows up, or pot. Whatever that sacrifice is in, that servant came up with that big fork, doing, and all that the flesh was brought up, the priest took for himself. Well, very first thing, if that meat is in the pot, the kettle, the pan, it's on the fire. It's not ready for the priest to have. It was to be finished off by the fire. All that the flesh had brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh. That's where the tabernacle is, Shiloh. Long before Jerusalem. Unto all the Israelites that came hither. So here are people, the nation of Israel is coming to the tabernacle in Shiloh. They are bringing their offerings. They are putting them on the brazen altar like they're supposed to. And these priests are coming up and jabbing into the plate. It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. And about Eli, let's look at 1 Timothy 3, 4. 1 Timothy 3, 4. In 1 Timothy 3, 4, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? And Eli is going to get in much trouble. Eli has the power as the high priest, and they are his sons. Say, hey, that's it, you guys. God, we need to get, we need to get a meeting here, God. As far as we know, Eli has only two sons. And God, they're wicked and vile. They cannot do what they've been doing. I need guidance. And he won't. And we'll see why. In verse 15, not only what we've done, they go in there and just jab the meat of whatever's being cooked in. And it also shows you, too, another thing about, not only was the animal put on that grill, but it was in pans, it was in kettles. Cauldrons and pots. There's all kinds of sacrifices going on in that brazen altar. And before they burnt the fat. Now let's look at Leviticus 7.23 before we finish this first. Leviticus 7.23 showed the complete violation of the law. And these priests are to know this. In Leviticus 7.23. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Ye shall eat no manner of fat, of ox, or of sheep, or of goat. Fat, that part of the animal, is forbidden. So let's read the violation in verse 15. And before they burnt the fat, the priest servant. Now who is that guy? And we saw him in verse 13. Go back to the law and see where you see the priest servant doing 
The priest servant is doing the burnt offering. The priest servant is stepping in where the priests are supposed to be. And these servants of the priest, whoever they are, they desire what was supposed to be given to the priest. They are mentioned as servants. They're not mentioned as family. They're not mentioned as Levites. They're not mentioned as priests. But why? The priest servants came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest. It's really for you. For he will not have sodden flesh for the but raw. That's another violation. That meat was to be cooked. No way was it to be raw. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently. There's the fat. All right. The guy who's bringing the offering to the Lord knows more than what the people behind in the tabernacle know. That guy says, hey, that thing is supposed to be on that brazen altar. I can't give it to you raw. That violates. And he says, fail to burn the fat presently. Burn the fat. Then take as much as thy soul desire. Once it's been burned, once it's been put on that fire, then go ahead. Then he would answer, nay, no. But thou shalt give it me now. And if not, I will take it by force. In violation of the scriptures. In violation of the law. Wherefore, this is what God has to say. Wherefore, the sin of the young men were very great before the Lord. For the men abhorred, hated, disliked the offerings of the Lord. And you'll find that in the book of Malachi on what the, pre, the later priests thought about God in this earth. It, it, it's contemptible. It's, oh, same old thing. So, verse 22 now. We've read the chapter about Samuel. Verse 22, chapter 2. Now Eli was very old. So this has been going on for a while. And heard all that his sons did unto all Israel. He knows. He's heard it. He's aware. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. The women come and bring their offerings and doing service to God. And these men, his sons, the priests, are taking them home. And since they're married committing adultery with the women. And Eli knows all about it. And he said unto him, Eli said, Why do ye such thing? For I hear of your evil dealings, as the first time dealing shows up. Evil dealing. Deal the cards out. Evil dealing. By all this people. It's public knowledge what you guys are doing. Everybody knows you have a poor testimony. Nay, my son, for it is no good report. No, it's not a good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. Well, that's interesting. The priests are supposed to help them in fellowship and relationship with God. And they are driving the people to sin even worse. And that deal is, a, is the first place it shows up. And it only shows up in another place, John 4, 9. And that's dealing with the Samaritan woman that the Jews have no dealing with us. The prejudice. So a dealings here is, it's your wicked deed. The dealings there is, you don't have anything to do with us. If one man sin against another the judge shall judge him you done me wrong all right we need to go to the judge we need a judge to hear us and declare who's right and who's wrong but if a man sin against the lord look at that not only are they sinning against the people and causing the people to sin but they are sinning against God. Who shall entreat for him? Well, you're the priest. It's supposed to be your job. 
And if you're not doing your job and you defile God, you're out of luck. And that's the office of Jesus Christ today. Sinless perfection. He's not going to make God angry. He's not going to do God wrong. He's not going to cause the people to transgress. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. So what did Eli do? He gave them a mouth lashing, and they didn't listen. The child Samuel grew on in favor both with the Lord, unlike his son, and also with men who they were angry with the priests. And Luke 240, that's a type of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ showed favor with God and man. And there came a man of God unto Eli. Uh oh. And said unto him, Thus saith the Lord. Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in, in Egypt, in Pharaoh's house? Uh-oh. God's given a history lesson. And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, Levi, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear the ephod before me? His boys were doing it wrong. They were not doing what they're supposed to. And did I give unto the house of thy father, Levi, all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Yeah, yeah, what about the fat? Can't have the fat. Uh, you're supposed to let it cook a little bit. Then you got it. Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and my offering. Eli's sons are the ones who have been kicking the well, their, their servants are kicking the sacrifices, and God is holding Eli. In, you know, that little talk you had with your sons didn't do anything, Eli. You're the high priest. So the thing is, well, now Eli was old and heard all the sons that did. Where is, isn't he supposed to be in that tabernacle himself? You mean he hasn't seen what's been going on? Where is he? One of the places you find out in chapter 1 is in verse 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten Shiloh. And after they had drunk, Eli the priest sat upon a seat by the posts of the temple. There's supposed to be no seat there. What would you do with a seat? You're supposed to be going around in checking everybody, make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to, everything's orderly, everything's going in a fashion. Where are you, Eli? And when we read 1 Timothy, if a man desires the office of ministry, you can't even control your own children in your house. Now, they live outside your house, and, and they're no under your roof. Okay, you have no dealing of them. But these sons are in the house of the Lord, in the tabernacle, which Eli is set over. Oh, I hear this problem. You should have known about this problem. Everybody has knows this problem. And all you do is talk to them. Well, God's going to send a preacher. God's going to send a prophet to come talk to you. Gives you a little history lesson. Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and my offerings. You got rid of your boys. You should have did something about those boys. You should have seek me. I would have done something. Which I have commanded in my habitation. And honor is thy sons above me. Oh, there he goes. This man has put his sons above God. That's the problem. And when you put somebody, anybody, anything, everything, anything that you put above God as honoring is a sin, and you got troubles. And honor is thy son above me to make yourself fat. And we're going to read later on, they're going to say Eli is a very fat man. <laughs> because he's sitting down. Not walking about, not standing, not lifting animals, not washing himself, not cleaning this, not going here where he's supposed to. He's sitting. 
with the chiefest, that's the first time that shows up, of all the offerings of the Israel of my people. The priests were to get the best meat, the best fruits, the first fruits, everything that was best of the land of Israel, the priests got. Eli is living off it, high on the cow, because you can't say hog, you're not under grace. Those priests are supposed to be walking, they're supposed to be in the, the desert heat. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house, and the house of thy father, Levi, shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor. Oh. So you give your dedication, your love to God. He'll give it back to you. How do I get recognized by God? Recognize God first. Eli's not honoring his, his uh, God. He's honoring his son. And they that despise me, Eli, shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I, God, will cut off thy arm. And the arm of thy father's house, and that's not the literal arm. Because if it's a literal, go back over here to Job. And Job gives us an excellent definition if it was a literal. Job 31, 22. Now Job is talking literal. Then let my arm fall off from my shoulder blade and my arm be broken from the bone. That's literal. Over here God's talking to Eli. He says, listen, you're an arm of the children of Levi and I'm breaking you. Now they're going to, he's not going to break the entire Levi family, but that of Eli, there shall not be an old man in thy house. He's old. They're going to die in early age. Thou shalt, excuse me, and thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, and he will. And all the wealth which God shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in thy house, thy house, not Levi, thy house, Levi, forever. And a man of thine, your family, Levi, whom I shall cut off from my altar, the priest, that serving that altar, supposed to be serving that altar, supposed to be doing right, shall be consumed. And shall be to consume thy eyes and to grieve thy heart. And all the increase of thy house shall die in the flower of their age. So life will be short for Levi's family. And this shall be a sign on today. This is what's going to happen to show this is it now. That shall come upon thy two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And one day they shall die, both of them. And I believe it's the next chapter or the next few chapters. Look at it real quick. Yeah, next chapter. Not even a chapter. And I will raise me up a faithful priest. It's going to be Samuel. Samuel's not of Levi. That shall do according to that which is which is in my heart and my mind. That's God speaking. And I will build him a sure house. And he shall walk before my anointed forever. Now that's not Jesus that priest. Because my anointed of God is Jesus Christ. And you're looking at a future tense even of David. Because when Jesus Christ sits king of kings. And on David's throne, David is called the prince. David is also given a promise by God that your family forever and ever. Your throne, David, forever and ever before the Lord Jesus Christ. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thy house 
shall come and crouch, that's the first and last time that word shows up, to him for a piece of silver and for a morsel of bread. They're going to be beggars. They're going to have signs, feed me. And say, put me, I pray thee, into the priest's office. You're, you are in the priest's office. No longer you're not. Oh, we can do any service to God. That I may eat a piece of bread. And that bread, they want they they want that bread that's in on the, the, uh, the show bread. They want that taste of that show bread anymore. And they've been disqualified. Now this will happen. 1 Kings 2.27 will close. 1 Kings 2, chapter 2, very early, 27. We'll start in 26. In 2.26, and also Abiathar the priest said to king, Get thee to Ananoth. That's where Jeremiah lives. That's a, that's a priest Levite city. Unto thy own fields. Get out in the fields and you're going to go labor now. For thou art worthy of death. But I will not at this time put thee to death. Because thou bearest the ark of the Lord. The bearest the ark of the Lord God before David my father. That's when they brought it into, into Jerusalem. And because thou hast been afflicted. And all wherein my father was afflicted. So Solomon thrust out a bar from being priest unto the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord, which he spent concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh, and that is spoken about back here in 1 Samuel chapter 2. And that is, according to the dates here, about 150 years. Yeah. Close to that. I will, you know, I'm not going to nail it straight down. About 150 years later, that prophecy happened. You say, well, God, you know, the Bible says God's going to come. Well, this one happened 150 years, but it did happen. So God's word will happen as he said it will. It just takes some time. God's not on our calendar. 